it has been quite a while since I uploaded a new video and that is actually because I didn't know what to talk about and um, what to share with you guys but I just will talk and we'll see what gets out of it and at least I can give you a small update even though there's not that much to update. Um, I uploaded two and a half weeks ago so it really has been a while usually I at least upload one video a week um, but in that two and a half week I didn't hear anything from the hospital and I called them I emailed them etc and they didn't react, didn't get back to me. I'm really we're still waiting. I haven't got a clue what to do. They didn't send me to a dietitian, etc. So I was just, I was so, I am still so exhausted that I just felt like, okay, I have to let it go. I can't change anything. I can't force anything. I did what I could and the rest is not up to me anymore. At the moment, I really do suffer a lot from my diabetes. It's quite hard to, um, to cope with it because I really don't know what is the best to do. Um, at this moment, I do feel, uh, follow um, a food plan and um, that does help me. But with this food plan, I still have two big hypers each day and most of the time, also um, still one hypo but I can get that uh, quickly up so that's that's okay but um, I really don't know what to do with the hypers and I can't take insulin or something because it's far too risky for me to do that but it's very bad for your body to have that hypers it costs huge amounts of energy and I really notice that I get so so tired of it so when I have a hyper at first then I just need to lay, bed, lay in my bed for at least one hour until it lowers a little after that. And um, I, I researched on did research on internet and I, I do whatever I can. So I listen to all the specialists on internet, on YouTube, what they tell me to do. But it still doesn't work out completely. Uh, for example, I just had my uh, warm meal and um, they said on the internet that uh, you can still have carbs when you have diabetes 3C, but that you have to balance it out more with fats and, and proteins. And so I did. And when I have a warm meal now, for example, today I had a butternut squash, um, I had grains, I had three slices of beef and an egg. And as a dessert, I had uh, granola because I always like something sweet afterwards. And it's a granola which has sugar, but not that much. So there's not much sugar added. There are some honey, etc., in it, but not that much. And you would say that is a quite balanced meal. But still, when I will check my blood sugar in an hour, I probably will have a hyper from a blood, blood glucose uh, level of 17 because I usually have that after my warm meal. That is immense high and very bad for my body, but I don't know why. I can't, I can't change it. And when I eat too little, I'm just hungry. So I need to eat enough. And when I skip the carbs all the way, then my blood sugars are low, but then I'm so tired also, and then I will probably lose extra weight. So it's how on earth do I cope with this? And my GP called the hospital again, and they said, uh, another hospital nearby, and they said, yes, uh, she needs help from the hospital to cope with this diabetes, but we don't treat any eating disorder patients. She has to go to an eating disorder clinic, and the eating disorder clinic says, well, no, we're not going to take her because this is a medical uh, issue and she needs to go to the hospital. So it's the same all over again. I mean, the care in the Netherlands is wonderful. It's really top of the top, but only when you fit into a protocol. And as soon as you don't fit, it's just there is no help at all. So they don't do individual care well in the Netherlands. And that's the big problem. So that's why I can't get help. It's not because the care is so bad. No, because there is no care for me. So yeah, okay, that. 
so right now I'm trying to let go and to cope with it and to try to keep my stress levels a little um, yeah not that high so I try to relax um, and just keep eating and taking care of myself and distracting myself and that's not that easy uh, also because now yeah Christmas etc is coming and I have a hard time with that because I won't be able to spend that with family or friends I'm far too far away from them uh, like I told you before I'm in the north of the Netherlands right now and um, there are no friends living here so it would be quite a very very long drive and I can't go there go to my friends um, so that's hard but um, the first Christmas day my friend will be here so then we will spend it together and we're going to make a nice Christmas dinner together or yeah together <laughs> probably because um, usually I cook but now I'm very tired so he has to help me and he doesn't cook so um, it will be um, fun to uh, see how we're going to do that and probably we're going to watch nice Christmas movies you know the cheesy ones the romantic ones and uh, I love that and we have lots of lights then and um, uh, yeah we're going to make uh, it a very nice day and um, so I'm looking forward to that or at least I'm not really looking forward to that because I always think Christmas is hard I have a lot of bad memories from Christmas but I'm going to make the best of it let's state it like that um, one thing I wanted to talk about is um, a lot of people ask how my brain functions and how it can be that I'm so smart and educated but still so sick of my eating disorder well I can try to explain it theoretically and I will will do that right now and then I will try to tell you also what my diseased brain is thinking when I am in my eating disorder okay when you have your brain you, you look at my head okay um, you have different layers of your brain you have the top layer of your brain and you have you have different hemispheres so you have your left side and your right side of your brain and people who are more uh, mathematically uh, um, 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 minded um, they have um, the right side I must say it right the right side of their brain is, is most of the time a little more developed and people who are more into art and languages etc um, it's the different way around so it's the left side and there are lots of people who are more mathematically um, oriented who for example are left-handed because the left hand is um, um, coping with the right um, part of the body and when you're right-handed you're often more uh, left the left part of your body is often more um, uh, bigger or more um, yeah works harder for for you in compared to somebody who is more into mathematics etc and to the others uh, those sciences um, doesn't have to do anything with your education I mean you can be um, not educated at all but then still thinking more into um, words for example like I am I'm more of the languages and less uh, of the um, uh, I don't I, you know I'm so tired I can't even talk anymore okay then you have um, a part of the brain which is underneath of that that is called the hippocampus uh, the hippocampus is um, what makes you think about uh, uh, the things you cope with or that are happening and the hippocampus is actually uh, uh, a part of the brain that gives information to another part of the brain and it separates the information so it says oh I have to deal with it right now or I have to react on it or now I have to be uh, stressed out or now I can be calm so it or it it makes differences between all the things your brain um, gets through then you also have the amygdala the amygdala are, are very small um, like um, tiny little uh, apples which are in your your brain center 
and they are the ones responsible for your emotions. And then you have a third layer and that third layer that is also called the animal brain and that is responsible for the basic things like you have to eat and drink, have sex, uh, uh, etc. and breathe. So uh, it keeps your heart pumping. Um, so you have the, those, all those different layers. When you have an eating disorder, like anorexia bulimia, it doesn't matter what, then most of the time the middle of the brain has changed. So when you take a brain image of people with anorexia, for example, then you see that the middle part of the brain has shrunk. So that's the hippocampus. It gets smaller, literally. And it is also distorted. So when you look at it, you can see that um, for example, parts of it are not, not working at all anymore, like when you make an MRI scan, and other parts are over-functioning, so it is totally out of balance. That is really, you can really image that with uh, an MRI, so you can really literally see it in the brain. And with people with anorexia, it is also proven that uh, it is genetically. So they are already born with some, some differences, compared to people who don't develop anorexia and that makes you more vulnerable. That doesn't mean that everybody gets anorexia who has that genetics, but the chance is bigger that you get it. And oftentimes you see in those um, uh, families that there are lots of people who cope with eating disorder or with uh, addictions because uh, for other addictions, uh, the same um, uh, genetics are responsible or comparable genetics are responsible. So in my brain, my hippocampus isn't fun functioning as other brains are functioning. And also the amygdala aren't doing their work very well. So that's a difference compared to other people. But what can you do with that into practice? And is it reversible? Well, the good news is it is reversible. So when your brain changes and you are not that long into a severe eating disorder or addiction, then it is reversible. And you see when people recover, their brains also change again and grow back to normal. So the, the hippocampus can totally restore. So it can get as big as it should be again. So that is good news. But while it isn't, you have a problem because I still have my reasoning thinking that is the top layer and that is not uh, directly um, hurt by my eating disorder. But um, I can't reason myself out the hippocampus because that hippocampus is very strong the, 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 uh, and I can't change that ju just by reasoning because it just won't, 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 it isn't possible. And what happens when I'm in my eating disorder in my mind is that, for example, my hippocampus doesn't work very well. So um, one time I can make um, the differences and order all that information my brain gets. I can do that very good. But for example, when I'm very in my fears, um, and I am tired and I didn't take well care of myself, then I can get into a part of my hippocampus which isn't functioning well and everything is out of order. So I don't react well-minded. And you would think, how on earth can you think like this? Well, I do then. And I can't help it that moment because my brains literally aren't able to think normally. And let's give you a practical example. For example, um, when I am hungry, my first reaction is naturally. Um, at this moment, sometimes when I'm relaxed, I can think I'm hungry. Oh, I'm looking forward to have something to eat. But when I'm very stressed out and I'm in my distorted thinking and I'm hungry, then I think, uh oh, I'm hungry right now. When I will eat right now, I probably won't be able to control myself. And then, for example, I'm afraid to, to eat too much, to binge, for example. And then I think, well, you know something? I can better wait with eating till I'm not that hungry anymore. Then I have more control over what I eat and then I will eat. But that moment won't come because when I'm hungry, I'm hungry and it won't um, 
stop until I have eaten enough. But still, my brain thinks at that moment in my distorted thinking, I'd rather not eat right now because I don't want to lose control because that is much worse. So I just don't eat. And if I don't eat long enough, then the hunger will disappear and I don't, if, don't have to eat anymore. That is totally distorted thinking, but that is how my diseased brain is thinking at that moment. That's why uh, following a food plan does help me right now, because otherwise I would just have to trust on my body and my mind, and it isn't trustworthy at this moment, neither are. Um, so I hope this helps you a little to understand a little more about my thinking and why I'm still so sick, even though I'm a psychologist, I'm a, I'm a food scientist, you know, I know everything into detail, every theory, uh, what would be good for me, etc. But that doesn't help me when I'm in my disease thinking. And I even think it works against me because I can reason myself out of everything. And that is really not helpful. And I know, therefore, that I really need help to recover physically. And when I get to a better state physically, my mind will recover as well. And then I will be able to make really good choices. And I am making good choices at this moment also, but not enough. Otherwise, I would be able to recover myself just at home. And I still haven't been able to. I'm able now to stay the same as I am. And I really must put effort into it. But that is all that I can do at this moment. So um, I take it one day at a time and be happy with that. Um, I'm going to do the quote of today, and it's a really good quote at this moment. It is uh, a quote of Andy Rooney, and I googled him, and he was a man uh, pretty um, famous on the television and on radio, and he died in 2011, so uh, already a while ago. And he said this, first in Dutch, Iedereen wil op de top van de berg wonen. Maar al het geluk en de groei gebeurt terwijl je aan het klimmen bent. Oké, okay, in Engels. <laughs> Everybody wants to live on top of the mountain. But all the happiness and the growth happens while you are climbing. And that is so true for me right now. You know, I have my goals. I want to recover. I want to be happy and healthy and thriving in life again. I want to live on top of that mountain, but I'm not there yet by far. I'm still um, at the bottom of the mountain. But I must keep in mind that um, I don't know. I think also a part of the happiness because I do like to learn and to change for the better, but totally the growth happens while you're climbing. And that is hard because you have to choose to climb and you will have to put effort into every single step you make because uh, going down off the mountain, you can just roll down if you want to, but going upwards does cost a lot of energy and you have to put effort into it. And I will keep that in mind. If, I mean, when I want to get on top of that mountain, I will just have to keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. And remember and feel that it is a, um, essentially to growth and that growth does make me happy because I want to grow. I don't want to stay the same. Even if I would um, not recover fully, for example, physically, I still want to grow mentally and spiritually and emotionally. And that is also a blessing. So it can be a blessing that you need to climb that mountain every single day over and over and over again because it changes me for the better and I will get a richer um, human being from the inside and hopefully also from the outside very quickly. Okay, I will leave it with this because I'm very tired and I really want to lay in my bed for another hour, but I just didn't want to leave you alone and leave you questioning what's happened to her. I was just trying to keep myself staying alive and coping with everything. And now I'm in a space of, yeah, I did find some kind of a balance, 
but it's an exhausting balance and um, I hope to be able to deal with it and, and until I can get that hospital bed. And I really hope they will let me know very soon something about the date, etc. And if I hear from them, you are the first ones who will hear it too, so I will certainly keep you updated. Well, sweethearts, this was it for today and looking forward to your reactions again. Big hug. Bye.